<laughs> baby, 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 baby. Don't you know that you're so fine? Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Baby, 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 baby. I want to give a shout out to my little, 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 little grandbaby. Uh, Brandy. Brandy E. Norwood. I want to say uh, thank you this morning, young sister, for all of the music, for your being vulnerable and opening up about your anxieties and depressions. I really appreciate that. I think that most of the times when artists open up about how they really feel, who they really are, either y'all going to run from the hills <laughs> or either you're going to tolerate us with our vulnerabilities. And I think that's very important. So I want to thank Brandy for being such a champion. Um, and she got a new album out too. What is it? B7. Y'all check out uh, Little Miss Brandy, Moesha. So with that being said, <laughs> good morning, good afternoon. Good evening to you. Whatever side of the diaspora that you may be on, let me welcome you, welcome you, welcome you to the mental house with me, your host, Khadija. Okay, family. What I'm re what I really pray for uh, first and foremost is that we begin to celebrate ourselves a little bit more. All of us. Um, I love you. Is love enough for everybody? There's enough, whatever it is that you, you're looking for, whatever it is, there's plenty. If you want negativity, it's a whole lot of that going on, a whole lot. If you choose to be positive, in spite of, that doesn't mean that that's not there and it doesn't have its place and you don't give it its respect. But in the midst of it, you have to still stay steady, right? And I want to um, give a shout out to everybody that's struggling right now. Um, letting you know that we will get through this. This this, this too shall pass. As my mama, Norma, loved to say, she tells me all the time, this too shall pass. Okay. So... And I especially, especially want to say to my Ados family, keep your head up in spite of everything. Keep your head up. As much as you see a system that is trying to break your spirit, as they've done since you've been here, break your spirit. We're not having it, and it's a new day. And I want you to stay encouraged because it's difficult, a little difficult when you see everything running against you. Um, I was talking to an actress um, and, you know, they were going on about how the industry really caters to uh, racially ambiguous women, women who are dark skinned, women who show some color in their skin are not as celebrated. And so what happens is, you know, you, you see the division everywhere and this is all Actually, that the, that the um, elite that run this country, that's all they can do. They can only try to make a big deal out of our differences. And if we're stupid enough to continue to bite it without challenging it, without trying to dismantle it, then we're going to continue to have what we have, um, which is like what happened in Philadelphia. And I'm sure y'all are aware of it. And it's, it's pretty messed up. Anyway, a truck driver runs over a cop and protesters pelt police with bricks as Black Lives Matter demonstrators and looters swarm Philadelphia after police shot and killed a knife-wielding black man. Um, you know, I, um, let's go with this. Protests have erupted in Philadelphia after police Officers fatally shot Wallace Walter Wallace Jr., only 27, on Monday. 
Late in the night, growing anger turned into a violent standoff outside the Philadelphia Police uh, 18th District Headquarters. Several officers have been injured by bricks and other projectiles thrown at them by demonstrators. One officer was struck by a vehicle and was and the shocking moment was caught on camera by a protester. The shooting of Wallace Jr. took place along the 6100 block of Locust Street. No coincidence to where I live. Um, just before 4 p.m. when police officers arrived, they said they found Wallace holding a knife, which they said refused to drop he refused to drop, is what they said. Two officers then opened fire, striking him multiple times. A damn knife, right? And, they on, and, and then he was pronounced dead. Wallace's family said he suffered from mental illness and was on medication at the time of the death. So they couldn't use the rubber bullets. They couldn't use anything. They couldn't do nothing but shoot this animal down as they consider us animals. Right? Not you're an animal because of the way you operate. You're a demagogue. You have a, you, uh, you're a, a, a sore, a blight on humanity. Um, and the fact that you can use those rubber bullets when you want to, and obviously you use them at your discretion. I guess y'all feel like this uh, army of rioting and looting and all this stuff is going to continue to go on. I got two things I want to say. I want to make it clear. Let me say this too. Uh, what is the police went to the mosque? Oh man, what is up with that? Let me make sure I um, uh, uh, say give a shout out uh, to to a few family members. Before I go on, um, because this right here makes it so sick. Um, well, let me finish this. Rioting, vandalism, and looting erupted, and it, it, it went on for hours. At least 30 officers have been hurt, with 12 hospitalized, including one female officer, Sergeant 56, who suffered a broken leg after being hit by a speeding truck, pickup truck. That was videoed towards a line of officers close to the city, the center city, shortly before 1 a.m. Local reports also suggest that at least 30 people have been arrested. Of course, there's multiple instances of looting, and uh, police said multiple stores and were looted. Uh, including several right A stores in West Philadelphia. Okay, Will Smith, where are you? This is your part of town, right? In West Philadelphia, born and raised. Okay, clothing and shoe stores and one restaurant. Multiple fires were reported with at least one cop car set on fire amid the chaos, amidst the chaos, with police saying five police vehicles and one fire department vehicle was vandalized. The unruly scene were sparked by police shooting of Walter Wallace Jr., a man said to suffer from mental illness who was killed by officers uh, during a domestic call along the 6100 block of Locust Street. The cops arrived and they said they found Wallace holding the knife. Police said they repeatedly told him to drop the knife, but he failed to acquiesce. So the officers opened fire on him. You know, let me say this, y'all. And this is to all Americans. Whether you working, you done picked up a job now. You got a job that's going that that uh you know, look at it, look at them acting like they scared of this man with a damn knife and they shot him down like this. No bullets, no rubber bullets, no mace, no nothing. Of course, it's all captured on uh, the fatal confrontation was captured on video by a bystander who posted the clip to social media. 
The video shows two officers pointing their guns at a man as he walks away from them in the streets and then ducks around the car. The man then reemerges in the frame and is seen walking towards the officers with his arm outstretched. The officers are seen backing away from him as he continues to advance towards them in the middle of the street with their guns still drawn. Put the knife down, put the knife down, one officer can be heard. Saying in the clip, both officers then open fire on Wallace, shooting at least 14 times, and he collapsed in the street. A woman who is believed to be his mother, uh, I hope y'all didn't call the police because, you know, it's kind of difficult. When you call the police, somebody going to die. So, you know, now you got that balance and to deal with. That's why I said in all of our cities, in my opinion, we have to get with the NFAC. Discipline black families, black men and women who are willing and ready to police our people. We going to have to demand it. We're going to have to, as a matter of fact, we're going to have to take it. Y'all don't want to hear that, do you? Because it's going to be some bloodshed. And th those of you who want to hold on to your life are going to lose it. And those of y'all who want who who don't mind losing your life, you'll live forever. So remember that. And all I'm saying is this type of behavior, how long y'all think we can go on with that? I want to know from even the good thinking white people out here, how long do you think black people can go on being treated like a second class citizens? I know we got our issues, but that's because y'all have took a people and turned them upside down, inside out, uh, uh, took away their mores, their ways, their language, um, their religion. And you force fed them your shit. So now when you don't have any more need for them, you know, you know, either they're good for spare parts. You're taking our body parts because we don't sign the papers. Or you're shooting us down in the street and keeping us warm so you can get our organs out. Most of us are unemployed. We're unemployable. A lot of us got dope issues, okay, from from being driven mad by a society that has constantly put the hammer down on us. And all I want to know, I ask most white people is how long do y'all think this is going to happen? All the great empires have fallen. And I don't know what makes you think America is going to be any different. She's going to fall the hardest because she, she rolls the fastest. No other civilization, country has grown and assimilated into the world scale and dominated like America. But they only dominated through free labor, black people, and people that were enslaved and marginalized. How long do you think this is going to, this experiment, I should say, called America, is going to pan out like this? Because Y'all can no longer, you stack in the courts to try to keep white supremacy, this illusionary uh, doctrine of whiteness, to keep it going. You want to keep your foot on our necks like you did, like, uh, I mean, literally and figuratively like George Floyd as black people. We have a figuratively foot on our throats. You don't want to seem back to back up. You seem to be obsessed with us. And it, it is the truth. I got to say, it. it seems to be an obsession. It's unhealthy. You're always asking us what we're doing, always in our face, always want to do. It's like the Karens, you know. However, I realize that a lot of us are so damaged that we allow white folk to think that they can treat us that way because of our damage. And it doesn't really matter how we got there. It's just the fact that we damaged. So we're going to have to either eat our own so we can have a viable army. If they can't be trained and then untrainable, then we got to deal with our young. 
okay? Um, and because this type of stuff, it can't continue to happen, America. Uh, this lady that's running out of here, she said, you really had to give him that many fucking shots? And that's what a man uh, recording the footage is her shouting out. At least a dozen evidence markers were found to see. Witnesses told ABC that they want to know why a less lethal force wasn't used. I mean, I mean, come on, you guys, because you're, you're black. Because you're black. And it is in their DNA. They have been trained from the uh, slave patrol all the way up to the police officers that our lives don't matter. You can shoot us down. They can kill us with impunity. Won't nothing happen. They've already got that in their minds. It's only a very few that don't. Okay? And then they're usually looked at it suspectly. So you have to understand what a lot of their mindset is when they come to deal with you. You're not even human. And that's why I said, either we're going to have to think about making the exodus. I really do believe that. And if America's going to keep on continuing to do this, America is going to meet its demise. It's good. Yeah, I, I keep saying, y'all, we may not have the weaponry. However, I keep saying nothing burns like black people burning shit. Nothing. That's not a, this a threat. I'm just telling you. That's we that's what we do. And so at some point you like, don't I love America to some degree. I love the ideal of America. I don't like to meet in the bones and the garbage that goes on, but the idea that you can have humanity living in one country together, all not monolithic, and learn to get along and manage to help and love one another, that, well, hell, that's the kingdom of God. That's the kingdom of God. And America is far from it. But this kind of stuff is not going to continue to happen. I'm just putting out fair warning. Y'all think y'all going to keep on um, beating us, shooting us, all in the name of being a functionary puppet. You have families. You got wives and children. You took an oath to uphold the law. Not to be gangsters and thugs your own self. And shooting people down as if uh, uh, black people more specifically, as if their lives have no human value. Well, that's what happened in Philly, and and uh, it, it, it's just her, uh, you know, it's just horrible. Um, I can see a group of residents. They took to the street. They protested, um, and they had to bring the whole police force down. I don't care what city you in. You don't got more police than you got people. You know, and the people are going to show y'all. Y'all just keep. You're supposed to be serving the people. <laughs> this is not how we protect and serve. Well, not even looking for an alternative when it comes to a black man. I just bust some caps all in them and kill them in the streets. I don't think I can bring another story like this because it just really angers me. Uh, and I'm really sick of the elite and white people treating black people the way they are and, and, and people of color. And having no remorse and having no uh, um, consequences. I basically am sick of it because I've lived through too much of it. And I, I want to thank um, uh, 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 the person who wrote this article who because they got some real, real deep graphic shots about what happened. Um, and at least... You know, they they gonna they starting to run y'all down now because nobody got no respect for you. You don't uh, you don't you don't uh, you don't require any nobody got respect for the police officers. Why should they respect you? Why? Man, this is crazy. 
And like I said, half of y'all need to be drug tested every month because it's not normal to even deal with this much stress and not have something to uh, bail you out. You probably got wife problems, got kid problems, you got drug problems. And all of y'all asses is, should be on notice that once a month or every th every quarter, y'all got to take a drug test. And we should start pushing for that in these cities. That's that's what the demonstration should be and the police reform. Start getting these guys drug tested and every damn thing else. I'm going to go. With that being said, if you like what you hear, please like, subscribe, share, share the video. Um, and leave your comment below because I don't know. I want to know what y'all think because I'm sick of it. I'm sick of it. See you in the next.